In this video, I want to talk about how we can derive the model implied variance covariance of indicator variables when we're talking about indicators and factors as being represented in their matrix form. So we've got a model here where we've got f, small f factors, and we've got v indicator variables y. And there is some loading of each of the factors on each of the indicators. That's not to say that the loading can't be zero, but just to say that there could, in principle, be loadings of each of these factors on each of these indicator variables. Furthermore, there are some error terms, which is the variance and covariance of the indicators, which is that which is not captured by the shared factors, and that's represented by these epsilon terms here. So when we write out the model in its sort of matrix notation form, then we find that y and v, our matrix of indicator scores for the v variables for n individuals, is equal to f n v, where that's the matrix of factor scores for each of the n individuals, times p primed f v, which is the transpose of the weightings matrix, plus then we're going to have a matrix u, which is our matrix of our unique factor scores, times the weightings on those specific unique factors. So that's just the model written out in its sort of complete matrix notation form, which we've seen before. In this video, we want to find the model implied variance covariance matrix for the indicator variables. And because there are V indicators, we know that this matrix should be V by V in terms of its dimension. So to get that, essentially what we need to do is we need to take the indicator score matrix, take its transpose, so we get something which is V by N in terms of its dimension, and then multiply it through by the original matrix, which is n by v in terms of its dimension. We also need to divide through by the sample size n. So we can rewrite this expression using this notation which we've shown up here to represent our model. So the first parenthesis is just fnf times p primed fv plus unv times d primed vv and it's the transpose of that entire parenthesis. And then we just have to rewrite that particular parenthesis again, so I'm just indicating that here by representing that by a dot. So now if you want to take the transpose of this entire parenthesis here, we know that we can take it of the individual terms uh, on their own and then sum them, because that's equivalent because the transpose operator is a linear operator. Furthermore, we remember that our laws of matrix multiplication mean that AB, all transposed, is equivalent to B primed times A primed. So essentially what happens under the taking the transpose of a product, the order of multiplication of that product inverts. Okay, so if we do that, we find that this first parenthesis becomes PVF times FFN or work which I'm going to then indicate by putting a prime over there just to indicate the fact that I've actually taken the transpose of that. And then what we get is we get dvv times uvn all primed. So I'm just going to rewrite this second parenthesis here so it's just easy to see what's going on when we expand it. It's just equal to fnf times pfv all primed plus unv times d primed vv. Okay, so if we actually expand this, then the first term we're going to get is just when I take this first expression here and multiply it by the first expression in the second parenthesis. So if we do that, what we get is we get PVF times FFN, all transposed, times FNF times P primed FV. Okay, so that's the first expression. The second expression is found by taking the first component of the parenthesis and multiplying it by the last of the second. So that's just going to be PVF times F primed FN times UNV times D primed VV. Okay, so that's the second component. We could then do the same for the last two components. And what we're going to then do is we're going to use this expanded form of our matrix or I should make sure that we're just multiplying this whole thing by the inverse of n. We're going to use this expanded expression here to help us derive the modeled implied variance covariance of our indicators.